In professional motorsport, it always appears to be the driver that really is the make or break in terms of lap time and ultimate finishing position. However, there is a team of engineers that go on behind the scenes making sure that car is as good as it can be. And the race engineer plays a critical role in getting the best performance out of the driver as well as the car. We're here with Aaron from Harris Race Radios in New Zealand. And Aaron is no stranger to race engineering. In particular, he's been engineering cars in the Australian GT Championship, TCR, NZV8, as well as the Bathurst 12 Hour and also the Australian Supercars Super 2 Series. We're here to find out a little bit about what a race engineer does. So Aaron, obviously a vast array of experience in your past with a whole lot of different cars. And what I want to find out is really what it is that a race engineer does on race weekend because you could have sort of could be considered the unsung heroes of motorsport. Yeah, for sure. You can either be the hero or you can be the worst person because the driver's never at fault, it's always the engineer. So let's talk about the tools that you've got at your, dispose, at your disposal and what you're actually doing with those tools. So what are you relying on to get the performance out of the car? So probably obviously the main one is the data. Um, like in the Super 2 we have telemetry live coming back plus we obviously pull the data out afterwards and we also have video. That's probably our two key things we look at. Now, it's, as far as data goes, there's a huge array of data and you've got engine data, you've got chassis data, you've got data about what the, the driver is doing on the controls, the accelerator, the brake uh, and the steering of course. So processing all of that information is in itself a pretty big task and I know, uh, particularly at an enthusiast level, uh, more data often isn't better and uh, it can end up being confusing if you don't know what to interpret. Can you give us your workflow, so let's say you turn up to a new racetrack for the first session of the weekend, car goes out on the track, what are you looking for when the car comes back from that first session? Yeah, so first session is obviously critical, like hopefully we've got a base set up from when we've been there before, but obviously pull the data out, have a look through the data, obviously make sure your vitals are right, you know, your temps, your pressures and all that, and then you start working with your driver to maximise that chassis to their own comfort. So every driver likes a totally different thing so one guy might like soft springs the other guy might like stiff springs one guy you know likes tires to go away at the end of the race the other guy will like at the beginning so you've got to work fast because you never have that many sessions so the data is the most important thing you can work with so there's really not a lot of black and white when it goes into motorsport. I just want to come back to something you said there, you mentioned checking temperatures and pressures there, so while as a race engineer obviously you're, you're trying to optimise the chassis and the driver, uh, of course it doesn't really matter how well the chassis is working if the engine throws a rod, so it really is critical to just clear off that the engine is in good operating condition and you don't need to worry about that so then you can move on to the job of focusing on the data. What I want to also get an understanding of is obviously you're going to get feedback from the driver, the driver is going to get out of the car and tell you what he likes, what he doesn't like, sometimes complain, I imagine quite loudly about a significant handling problem. How much focus do you put on what the driver is telling you versus what the data is showing you? Yeah, it's hard. Like if it's an AM driver, you've got to go 100% on what he wants. Because if you give him the best car in the world, if he's scared, he's not going to drive it fast. So that, that's a tough one, but you get a pro, you get the car right, and then they'll go faster. So it's that compromise. You've got to say, well, this is what the driver wants, this is what the car wants, then you've got to merge it together and obviously always want to get the fastest car you can. With some of the data systems now as well, it's possible to overlay a uh, video from inside of the car just to give you another element of exactly what, what was going on, what the driver was doing and uh, also importantly what was happening in terms of traffic perhaps around the car at a particular point on the track. How, how pivotal is that or how important is that becoming getting getting a really good read on that data? Yeah and that you're exactly right, like we'll look at the data and we'll go what happened there, there's a little slip there, then you go all of a sudden look at the video, there was traffic or there was something on the track or so that is always a trap you'll always find. So. You've always got to look at the big picture. If you look at one little lap time, so you've got to look at the whole session. If you look at one particular lap, you'll actually struggle to move forward because there's always something on every lap. Like, if everyone could make it perfect, everyone would be as fast as Michael Schumacher, and that's not going to happen. All right, so when it comes to optimising the performance of the car, what are the sort of levers that you've got available to pull in terms of what adjustments you can make? totally depends on the car so and that's probably the tricky thing with someone like me who race who engineers in say eight different cars they're all so different so a supercar will be over here and over here maybe the mark car we run so each car will like something totally different so you've sort of got 
things you can work with. Uh, on every car's got its own tools, if you like, to make that car to get rid of understeer or oversteer. So it's not it's not black and white. So the book is not the same for every car. All right. And it's going to be difficult then, I want to maybe try and get some generalisations. Let, let's say uh, you're engineering a, a Super 2, so for those who are not familiar, sort of a feeder series to the Australian Supercars uh, Championship, really popular and very active form of motorsport in uh, Australasia. So in terms of, let's say you've got a driver that is complaining of uh, corner entry understeer, just for one example, uh, what sort of aspects could you look at there to improve that? So a big one on the supercar is brake pressure, making sure they've got the right amount of brake pressure. So obviously we look at the data, and if they're not maximising the brake pressure, then he's never going to have the car on the, on the nose. You'll see them, they're always, the splitter is always touching. So if they're not maximising that, there's air under the car, so then they will get understeer. So that's the first thing we check. But then if they've got all that right and they're doing their job properly, then we look at things like uh, rear roll centre. So we can put more roll centre on, so basically it tips the car in to rotate it through the turn. And you can adjust that roll centre relatively quickly during a pit stop or in the pits? Yeah, correctly, like literally in the boot uh, and you'll get that done really quickly. Um, so, But then in saying that, they've got tools in the car they can change. So they can change sway bars really quickly. On You see them with their levers and brake bias. So if you say, well, okay, so understeer, you'll either soften the front to let it tip over more so it'll get the grip, or you may do the rear, or you may just change your brake bias a little bit. So we look at the data, we can see the front tyre temperature going up, we go, okay, there's obviously an issue there. We look at the bars, they haven't changed the bars, so we'll make a little reminder, try changing your sway bars, then they'll go, right, yeah, change your sway bars. So, I mean, over the course of a race as well, it's not just a case of getting the car set up for the start line, it's a case of monitoring the car during the race and, and optimising that. I, I'm guessing as well the handling balance is going to change as that fuel burns off as well? Yeah, 100%. And the problem is it changes from corner to corner. So if you see someone really good like Van Gisbergen, his hands are going flatter. He's changing sway bars, he's changing brake bias every corner. Most people can't do that. I think he's pretty unique, like, you know, and, and that's that's how you optimise it and he's really good at it. Yeah, there's a lot going on when you consider those uh, multiple brake bias changes and sway bar changes during a lap and we see that a lot, particularly in qualifying. Uh, now, I just want to also talk, again, this is a little bit unique to a car like the Super 2 where they run a, a locked rear differential and then there can be some significant problems with getting a car particularly to turn in. A car will generally want to push or, or understeer with that locked diff. Uh, so what are the techniques used to, to get around that? Obviously, uh, you'll, again, you'll notice that a supercar quite often they use a lot of kerb so that the inside wheel is off the ground so then it will rotate fast. So it's all about that rotation early on those things and again, that's why you see them so far up and hitting those kerbs so hard. Now at the same time you've got the, the problem with optimising the front grip and while during a corner obviously the, the majority of the load is placed on the outside front wheel, uh, that inside front wheel still plays a part so uh, how important is optimising the, the grip from the inside of the car? Yeah, it, again, it's ju it is just as important. Like, yeah, you can work on the outside, but if the grip on the inside's not there, you're going to have the same issue. So it is a compromise, and and everything you do in in my job is a compromise, you know. And that's probably the challenge. And there's weather. There's so many things. You know, you can have temperature change a little bit, and you can see it. The best thing that I like is when a driver comes in, he tells me one thing. I can double check him. So if they're trying to cheat, in other words, I changed the swear but it didn't. Well, it hasn't changed on the data, so you didn't actually do it. Uh, in terms of the the car balance and what the driver's telling you as well, and I mean, I imagine this is more of a problem with amateur drivers versus pro drivers, but often some of these uh, handling problems can actually be driver induced. So, uh, how do you use the data to actually isolate that? No, in fact, uh, potentially this corner entry understeer or uh, corner exit oversteer has actually been drive a driver problem, not a, a car chassis balance problem. Yeah, we see it a lot. We actually see it a lot where, you know, a guy might be putting too much steering input into it. So, and again, we can see that on the data in most cases you'll have steering traces or you'll use through the Gs, depending on, on what you've got. So, too much steering input, they're going to have that issue or they're jerky on the steering wheel. So, we'll see all that on the data through either, you know, your steering input or Gs or depending on the car. So, like a supercar's got over 60 channels of data, you know, a, a base system, 
may only have three or four channels, but you still get the same result. You've just got to work with the tools you've got to make that car go faster. Now, actually, that's, that's a nice segue into to the next topic I wanted to talk about. So obviously we've been talking so far about some, some fairly top level cars with a lot of channels of data telemetry. Obviously this sort of data is not something that uh, the average home enthusiast uh, maybe competing in club level racing is, is going to have at their benefit. So when you're looking at a, a, a more simplistic data logging system, uh, does this limit what you can do or are you still able to get some really useful results from a, a very basic data system? Oh, 100%. And I think, you know, as long as you've got speed and you've got Gs, you can go so far. If you've got longitudinal and lateral Gs and speed of a corner, you can actually work everything out because you can work out how fast you're going in that corner, what Gs you're doing in that corner laterally through the corner, and obviously longitudinal in the braking zone. So that'll tell you everything you need to go. If you make a change, you're going to see whether you're going forwards or backwards through those Gs. Look, it's been great to get some insight there Aaron and uh, hopefully our viewers will maybe have a, a better perspective on what a race engineer does and a better perspective on how vital that data logging system is. Thanks for the chat and all the best for your upcoming racing. Thank you, cheers. If you like that video make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you're not already a subscriber make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.